Okay, so lots to talk about and do today. Um, first of all, basically we've had two weeks of classes. What have we accomplished in the two weeks of class? And and we have set up our own local server. Now, by that, what does that mean? <laughs> we're, we're, we've done something really cool, but I'm not sure what that is. Yes, when we create a local server on our computer, it is exactly the same as turning our laptop or our computer into a server. It is now a server. If somebody, if we set up a web page on there, and gave somebody our IP address and they went to that server, it would host it like a web server because it is. When we created our local server that we connected to, we made a server launching Node.js on your local computer, made your computer into a server. Isn't that cool? You've now made a server. And I can guarantee this 100% because I went through the exact same process on a remote server over the weekend to create a remote Node.js server. I went to Amazon Web Services. I hit to, went to LightSail and I said, create a Node.js server. And it did. And I uploaded all of those same server files that we were using in our program. And I said, NPM start, and it became a server. And we're gonna actually attach to it here in a little bit. We're, we're gonna connect to it and see what happens when a bunch of people connect to the example project. Basically what we did last week and the week before is we created a Node.js server on our local computers. That is exactly the same as if I went to Amazon Web Services or Microsoft or Google or whomever and said, I want a server and made it into a Node server and uploaded all of my uh, TypeScript files to it. Exactly the same process, minor variance because I was working on Linux instead of on Windows or uh, Mac, but largely the same. And later this semester, we will cover that process on how to make your own remote server. I'm not going to require that you keep it up and running because that costs money, but I do want you to go through the, pr the process of having created your own server at least once. It, it can be valuable. And the reason why I chose light sale servers is it's like $3 a month, $3.50 a month. So, you know, less than the cost of a pizza. Right now, though, we're going to focus on the client and, and continue with working with our, our client stuff. I got on to Amazon Web Services because that's what I'm most knowledgeable about. You could use Azure. You could use Google. Um server system, you can use digital oceans. It really doesn't matter. I'm most familiar with Amazon Web Services. I created an instance. It is a Node.js instance. I named it Calisius. The process of creating one is really simple. Let me show you real quick. Create instance. We're going to use Linux. I want it to be Node.js. I want the $3 version. Create instance. No, I don't. Okay. You, you do not have to do this. I just wanted to emphasize how simple it is. How simple it is. There it is cre being created. Wow. So literally, that's all it was. Then all I had to do was upload my files, do npm install, npm start, and it was up and running. That is a remote server running in Virginia. Yes, yes, really delete it. Yes, I acknowledge you're deleting it. Okay, so I've got this server up there. It gives me the IP address. We're going to need that in just a minute. That's our IP address. That's what we're going to be using. Why isn't that gone? I said, go away. There, it's, it's really gone now. 
Just double check. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to be using this IP address for connecting to our server. Um, so let's jump over back into Unity Hub. I've got my Calisius Hello World from last week. Everybody ready to connect to a remote server? Yeah, go ahead and get Unity launched and bring up what we were doing last Thursday. We launched that same client. That exactly the same thing, you, but you don't have to launch your server. Okay, up here <laughs> where it says WS colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 2567. Delete where it says localhost and type in our IP address. So 34. 229-83-156. And you should still have the colon 2567 afterwards. So what we've now told it is that we're no longer connecting to the local host, but we're going to connect to a remote IP address. What was the port again? 2567. So this is doing an unsecured connection to a web host or web server for our network communications. Once we're ready, you can tell it to go ahead and create the client, and then I want it to join or create room. You may have to click it twice. And now I've got cubes created. So my session ID is different from yours. Is that, should I do join or create room? So that way I join? Them? I did join or create. So if it sees a room, it should join it. But if it doesn't see a room, like if you hit it before I did, and yes, I see responses now. This is streaming past. State has been updated as people are hitting send message. Or they're joining. Did you send memes yet? Oh, slow down, slow down. <laughs> we got things moving around here on the screen as people hit send. 725, 751. It is responding. And we'll dive into that. We're going to look at the code and see what it's doing behind the scenes. The main thing I wanted to see was what happened when we had more than one person connected to a room. And everybody, when you hit the send message, the blocks start moving to the right. Different blocks start moving to the right. So if I hit send message, some block is moving and that should be being transmitted. Wow, it says I have 999 messages from people hitting the sin. We have our cubes moving around inside the environment and we're all seeing, we're all interacting in that same environment. So now we are connected to a remote server, whereas before it was just your local server and you were when you were doing this, it would only give the response. Does Correct. this make is it making sense? Basically, we've got a true connection happening here where I have the remote server. So I've got a remote server, and then everybody's laptop is connected to that server and is sending information back and forth to it. So every time a state change happens, it gets sent back to everybody. Every time anybody hits a send message, that goes to the server, and then the server sends that update back to everybody else. That's, in essence, multiplayer. Congratulations. We just made the world's most boring multiplayer game ever. Woo! <laughs> What's not to love about clicking and pressing? And, and people are still tapping on it in the class. You know, it's the, the cubes are moving around. 